Nat 20. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Nat 20. Today we are doing a one-off quest, and let me make this clear that it is ruthless. So, for everyone at the table, you have choices to make. If that choice gets you killed, that is your own fault. Death is common, the price for success is high. I love having fun. <laughs> With that being said, we will go around the table and quickly introduce everyone's character before the adventure begins. There is a few people missing, so there's only three of us today. Yeah, so we're yeah, missing Tony and Duncan for this quest. Which is kind of the reason why we're just recording one up one up. Yeah. Now. Well, I mean, they're not here, we're not really missing them, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gage, we'll start with you. Yeah, so my character is Orc Nork, the science orc. <laughs> so he's a an orc, of, as the name like kind of stands by, and he's just in this world to try to spread science and magic and like feeling good about everyone and try to have everyone be friends and help the world. Uh, yeah, he's just a trans. He's from the school of transmutation. And, yeah, that's basically just Fort Nork. Awesome. Very cool. Clayton. Okay, I'm playing Arden Lynch. Uh, he's a human wild, ma- wild magic sorcerer. Um, he, when he was a boy, he was admitted into a school of transmutation, but he flunked out after uh, lacking arcane abilities, uh, just being a troubled child. And when he was expelled, he got so mad that he tried to steal a scroll of wish from his headmaster that transported the pair of them to the Feywild uh, when it went horribly wrong. Uh, and his headmaster died, and after eventually fighting his way back to the material plane, he now seeks to make for his wrongdoings by spreading good through the world with his newfound uh, sorcerer abilities due to the potent magic of the Fey. Now that's a dark story. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Ruthless. Exactly. <laughs> cool. I'm playing Aegis, a Warforged fighter. Uh, his background is pretty much he started out uh, in a war of Delphania, where he pretty much hated humans, and he was designed to be the perfect defense on the front lines. Eventually, he was almost decommissioned to uh, defend a certain dwarven ruins, and he spent most of his time there just training and being a uh, kind of fixing his mastering his fighting style and uh, he's just doing menial tasks uh, cleaning up the place until a dwarf just kind of came by and pretty much just said that he did, wasn't needed anymore so he was sent out to adventure and wander the lands, because the only life he knew was war. And met up with Arden Lynch and Borknork, and now he's here. Okay. Do we like each other? Are we friends? Hell no. Well, <laughs> I feel like Borknork is kind of going to be the mediator. The mediator. mediator. Trying to get you guys to be friends and so Arden has no issue with this man. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... Character that's been introduced. Let's begin the adventure. Mm-hmm. You all currently reside in the city of Mastodonia, uh, named Mastodon, to keep in the spirit of the kingdom. Now, you have all been brought together by the king purposefully. He has asked that you stay banded together in terms he will pay you a wage monthly, uh, only to upkeep the moral of the city. See, the three of you are heroes of the land. You embarked on a quest killing a very powerful, strong um, Goliath man who was leading a warmongering party through the three other kingdoms. Upon joining this one, you three were at that defense. You defeated him along with his party, successfully saving the kingdom and letting the other ones repair and rebuild. So now you reside in this city. People love you, they worship you, they want to be you. The people here, they feel safe around you. The guards, they want to be you. The criminals fear you. Above all, you are highly respected by the Royal Council. All three of you are currently at the Messy Maiden. 
a wonderful tavern slash inn about near the marketplace of Mastodon. It's immaculately clean in here. Although it's about mid-morning, so the traffic is low. There's a couple of dwarves and uh, a few humans. Uh, some half works. There's even a changeling on the table. Uh, they just seem to be enjoying some breakfast along with some drinks. Uh, you don't see the bartender right now as he's left the bar, but uh, you know him to be uh, another human as well. And that is where we will begin. Okay, uh, so Borknark is just going to sit at one of the tables, just with some of the common folk or whatever, okay. just try to chat with them, but also keep an, uh, an eye on Aegis, because he, uh, Borknark probably knows that he's not a huge fan of humans. Okay. So you keep a close eye on Aegis as you go to a different table. You, which table would you like to sit at? There's three right now. There's one with the, just a changeling sitting at it, uh, and then there's another one with uh, a couple of humans and a dwarf, and then another one with a couple of humans. I'll go with the one with the changeling. Okay. Uh, you approach that table, and he just seems to be minding his own business, eating his breakfast. Uh, it contains the fish and eggs, uh, as well as in his cup, and you get the loft scent of apple juice. Okay. So you go and you have a seat. How would you like to interact? Uh, well, first I asked, mind if I sit down with you? <laughs> yeah, I feel free. Yes, I have a seat. Thanks. Uh, I'm Borknark. Uh, what, what's your name? Matthias. 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 Nice to meet you. I don't, you don't really see many changelings around this part of the country. So. Oh, no, that's because we're already someone else. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just a little joke yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little joke. <laughs> we have a full of them. <laughs> Truthfully, there are quite a few of us. You just never see us in this form. Okay, of course. He yeah. watches you guys like the palish white skin. He's got uh, long white hair that kind of blends in. A little hard to see. Pale gray eyes. And he's just wearing simple leather armor. I'll just ask how, like, well, uh, how he came to be here and like his history or like, yeah, pretty much why he came here and what he's been up to. Oh, I was a uh, killer for hire for a long time in my early years. I was mostly sent around the, the kingdoms to assassinate uh, high-end leaders. I helped the king get his position here, actually. Oh, shit, no one's supposed to. Uh, but too late. Uh, anyways, that's what I did for about... Three years, and then I decided to delve into more exploration, cave dwelling, dungeon delving. Uh, I found nothing. It proved useless. <sighs> so what about now? Now, now I run a shop. A boring shop. A bookshop. I just got it yesterday, isn't it? Really? I don't even know what to Sounds know. great. Uh, books are, like, all of our history and all of our science and everything, so... It's really cool for you to open up. Sure, sure, yes. Uh, history and all that. Do you have any idea of a name? I seem to be stopping myself. I just got it yesterday. I don't know what to... What to call it. Uh, let's see. How about... Uh, I don't actually know. Uh, you know, good books from the years. In chapters. Chapters. <laughs> uh, in bottle. Since this is a new chapter in your life, <laughs> why not consider it calling it chapters? Call it chapter one. Chapter one. Where the story begins. Sure, I know. I don't really care about naming that. I don't even really want it to be honest, but I need money. So. Of course. Sure, I will call it chapter one. And then in parentheses, where the story begins. In parentheses. Might it's be a little much for my taste, but it's I fucking think. poetic. All right. <sighs> Chapter one, blah blah blah. Maybe. Okay. Why are you all sitting at my table, by the way? I'm leaving. Uh, I'm just gonna go find my own seat. I just wanted to butt in there to say about the bookstore because I used to be in a school. So, but yeah, Arden's like, yeah, I'm not sticking around. He just right. gets up and he walks over to find his own seat and beer. You weren't welcome here to begin with. <laughs> simple enough. You Shut your it. fucking mouth. <laughs> yeah, simple enough you find your own table and see. What would you like to be doing during that time? I just want to chill. I skip off some serious Aragorn vibes and just lean back. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I'll mm-hmm. just like drink my beer, smoke my pipe. Okay. 
Back at the table, with the chain doing with eyes. Yeah, so I, I just told him that I just skipped the table because I uh, was interested in your life because I haven't met many changelings before. Well, I appreciate that. Not a lot of people like to talk to us. They like to talk to a human us or a walk us or a gargantuan sized snake us. Only a few of us can do that, by the way. And I'm not one of them. That's cool. Maybe one I didn't know about that. Mm-hmm. I just find that uh, bringing together the histories of different people just can bring about friendship and more peace for people and like the kingdom even. You're very cushy, aren't you? Oh, uh, I haven't I seen. I've seen you. Uh, even the one that just left, I've seen all of you three. No, you haven't. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're the heroes, right? You're the heroes of the city. That. I guess that's what they call us, but... I see uh, pictures everywhere. I'm just Bork Nork. Nork. Uh, you might know me as Bork Nork the Science Orc. I've just been... I just try to spread science, magic, and history throughout the kingdom. Yeah, I have heard of that name. I apologize for calling you Cushy. No, no, it's alright. I don't think I'm a hero or anything. I just kill stuff. I do what I must. I've heard stories about you. You were in that... You were in a war a long time ago, man. It was a long time ago. <laughs> I'll leave that in my past. <laughs> and kind of leans over to me like, you know, there might be a couple of people here that know your other alias. Just saying. I heard some talk. It's back. Well, um, not really sure where I go from here, but, um, I would feel like eating. I know you guys want to chat and all that, but I just want my food. Of course. I don't well, think you get to spend a lot of time going, being a changeling and all people. As he said that, I'll just walk off. Can I? <laughs> may, may I insight him? Yeah. Do you want to see what he's up to? From here at the table? I, I'm just sitting in the corner. I'm keeping an eye. I, Aragorn vibes. I'm just watching everybody. And I'll just say, I'll leave you to your food. It's nice to chat with you. And I'll just go to a different table. Uh, 20. 20. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Uh, for the most part, he... He doesn't really like to interact with people a lot. He seems genuine, though. He seems genuine about it, yeah. Okay. That's why I make sure he wasn't trying to like, lie to us or scare us off. No, he's pretty genuine. He just doesn't want to mingle a lot. So you talk to the changeling with us. You know about him and his past. Um, his other things. You have a little bit of time to do some mingling. Okay. So, is there anything you guys like to do in the tavern now's the time? I'll sit in a corner far away from humans and, uh... Kind of do a weapons check, make sure everything's in working order, and keep an eye on my party members as well. Make sure they're not getting into trouble. Okay. I'll just try to, like, chat up some of the other tavern people, just to see if there's been any troubles in the city or anything like that. Alright, who'd you talk to? There's still the table with the two humans and the dwarf, and then there's the other table with uh, a couple of humans. I'll go to the one with the two humans and the dwarf. Alright. Um, you approach the table, and immediately you are greeted by the doctor. Like, hey, um, look who we have here! A hero, a hero oh, of the city. Oh, no, no, no. Um, greets us with no. these presents. Oh, this wonderful. We have to buy you a drink. We have to buy him a drink. Boys. No, drink, drink, drinks are on me. Actually, drinks are on me. I insist. See, this is why we love you. <laughs> this is why we love you. He takes his. Uh, mug and he grabs his friends and he's like, well, you guys are getting another drink anyways and starts pouring their drinks into his mug. <laughs> so, what brings you to our table? What can uh, we talk about? I just wanted to see if you knew of anything going on in the city, like any problems that could be dealt with or any major events that are happening. Well, uh, you, other than the speech you guys are going to make later, um, yes, that speech. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Gonna, I'm really excited for it. I think it's going to be absolutely wonderful. It should be great. You guys are just, ah, it's just amazing. <laughs> wow. Um, so you, you honor us too much. You honor us too much. I don't think I do, but okay. Um, yeah, so other than that speech, uh, there's rumors that the Thieves Guild has been trying to break into the castle's treasury. Um, and then other than the huge war that's going on on the border... Not much. Not much. Okay, uh, well, thanks. Uh, what are your guys' names, by the way? Oh, I'm Torn. Torn? Um, I actually don't know these two's names, I just sit down and drink with 
random people of course, from time to time. Yeah. It uh, happens, yeah. They most I think they hate me for the most part. <laughs> I think I talk too much. But a little. You see from the <laughs> corner at the end. <laughs> see? Um and he watches the two gentlemen get up and they don't seem to be want to be disturbed and they leave the tavern. Okay. <laughs> okay, bye. Have a good day. So what would you like to know? Us? Or talk about or do you want a game? I can game. Oh, yeah, I'm sure I'm up for a game. Uh, what do you have in mind? Oh, um, how do you like to gamble? Uh, I actually try not to gamble much. Like, just trying to keep a good image and try to be a role model for people and stuff like that. Fair, 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 fair. Okay. Uh, I, I sit up, though. <laughs> I'm intrigued from afar. He's like, well, that kind of... I think my friend there in the corner, uh, Arden, actually, might uh, like to gamble. Arden! 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 Oh, another I hero! Know. Come over here, I please! I start walking over and I say, uh, I've been known to be lucky from time to time. Ah, oh, is <laughs> so mysterious. Okay. Alright, please have a seat. I have a game for us. I sit down. So it's simple, right? You see this, and uh, he lifts up his hand. You see a ring with a ram's head on it. I hope at this ring. If you think that you can go out there, go into a shop, steal something, without being caught. Afterwards, we'll give it back, no harm done. But I just want to see if you can do it. See, I'm known to be uh, stealthy. Sticky fingered? Yeah, I guess you could say. I'll play your game, as long as you give us back. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm not one for taking things permanently. <laughs> Um, what shop? Well, there's this book shop that just opened up. It's the name of the uh, I say we can go there, and if you can steal the most expensive item in that shop. Fork Nark will interject. Uh, would be okay to uh, have a different, few different shop. I just learned of, well, made a friend who just opened this shop, and I'd rather not have any good You're not playing. Them. <laughs> and I'll step outside. I'll steal your item, and I I go. I will make my way to the library, the bookstore. All right. So yeah. So, sorry, <laughs> Port Dark. <laughs> you leave the tavern, and you take a couple of steps out, and you begin to travel down the pathway to the bookshop, which you know where it just opened up, because you've been here for a while. I do put my cloak up. Um, okay. Yeah. Keeping yourself concealed, you. Rummage through the streets. The streets are very crowded. It's dense crowds of people rummaging through them. Lots of humans, halflings, dwarves, um, kobolds, um, even um, a couple of kankus roaming around. Uh, as you pass and weave your way through them all, they don't notice you at all. They don't seem to take much attention. But you eventually reach the market square to where it's just vibing with the life. People are going on shopping sprees, buying all sorts of items, walking in and out of shops, checking out stands. Talking, conversing, you see uh, various um, shop owners that seem to be haggling very intensely. You know, like, oh, you need to get this now. Um, and right across, you see this uh, bookshop that just opened up. There's no sign on it. It's completely blank faced. It's a nice stone building. Um, about halfway down, it turns to wood, and then there's the wood door and a nice big paneled window. Oh, uh, the lights on? No one's inside? I don't know. Can I check? Yeah. Uh, as you approach the shop, uh, you go to open the door, and the door's locked. Uh, is it, I don't want to take the door. Is there any windows? Yeah, there's a big window that's beside it, and uh, as you scour around the building, you find that there's a couple in the back, although they're a little high up, about like 10 feet up. Is there any other, like, is there like a chimney? Is there a back uh, entrance? Is there like a, is there on a still so can I kind of go underneath and come up, or what's what's the deal? Uh, you can't go underneath, it seems to be flush with a stone, a couple stone yeah, ground. Yeah. Uh, the roof itself just comes to a wooden point, although the alley that you're in is very narrow. It's about only three feet wide, and there's a building beside it, and there's a, like various like strings strung across holding clothes to be dried. So it's attached by strings. Uh, uh, by strings. Okay. And you said the windows are pretty high up? They're about 10 feet off the floor. Okay, I'm going to make my way over towards uh, the other building. I'm going to use the strings. Okay. Like, uh, are they pretty strong? Would they hold my weight if I tried to? Or would roll, they probably snap? Uh, roll perception. Uh, seven. Seven. Uh, 
You're not sure? Yeah, totally share the strength of these wires that are starting to cross. Pretty practical person, so I wouldn't do anything I'm not sure about. So I'm actually just going to try and reach up to the one of the windows and hit the latch, see if it's locked. Okay, uh, we'll echo that. Ten. Ten. You go and you try to wall run up to grab onto the ledge of the window, and you take a couple of steps, and you do, you reach it, and you kind of pull yourself up trying to pull the window, and it slides right up. Sure Although it's a little tough at first, but you manage to push it up a little bit. Okay, I'll, like, pull myself in, and I'll, like, forward roll. Yeah, you pull yourself to the window, rolling gracefully. So now, uh, I'm about the second level of the bookshop. There's just shelves and shelves. Uh, right across from you is a stairwell leading downwards. But to the left of you is the rest of the room, and there's just shelves of books. Uh, various ones are on the floor. Most of them are stacked. There's a lot of books in here, but it's very unorganized, very dirty. Uh, it's dimly lit. Only the natural light is getting in. Yeah. And uh, it smells very musty. I'm looking for the most expensive item, right? Yeah. I I, I just I know that it probably won't be a book, uh, so I'll probably head down to the first floor, the main floor. The, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as you take your steps. I'll keep an eye out looking. I want to I see for anything valuable. Uh, you take your steps down the stairs, and a couple of them creak and crack. But uh, when you get down, you see that there's the pedestal to which, or the counter to where the shop owner would do his transactions. And behind him is a separate room. Uh, in the main room that's right beside the door, you can see out the window that there is marketplace that is being all lively. Mm. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much in this room, but going into the very back room on the first floor, you find that there is just piles and piles of books, very unorganized, just plopped all over the place. Uh, there's dust, tons of dust, tons of uh, cobwebbing on, across the walls. Mm. Uh, this is a little darker, there's not as much natural light getting in, but you can kind of barely see what's going on. Outlines of most, and uh, I'll have your own investigation. Uh, 19. 19 uh, is. You look around and you have a glance and you move some books. Uh, you move a specific pile of books that's in line with the doorway and it, some of the light shines onto what seems to be a small statue of a uh, black hand in the shape like this, where it's just four fingers pointed upwards, but uh, four fingers are touching the thumb. All right, estimate the value. Uh, yeah, if you roll intelligence, that's it. This is straight intelligence. This is straight intelligence check. Uh, 14. 14. You estimate that this is probably worth anywhere between, to the right buyer, approximately 50 to 60 gold pieces. Can I do an arcana check as well? Yeah. Usually it's true lands. Necrotic, so. Oh, I'm gonna use luck. Okay. It's the same exact roll. So 16 or whatever. 16. Uh, I wanted a good one, but that's fine. As you grasp the item and hold it in your hands, you see that uh, any marks from the sweat on your palms that have kind of smeared the perfect, shiny, reflective surface um, and tarnish it immediately get wiped away. And you get the sense that there is definitely some magic here that keeps it clean all the time. That's okay. valuable. That's where I'll take them. Okay. I don't want to touch with my bare hands, though, so I'm going to use uh, like an oil rag. Cause it, oh, it's on the display though, right? No, 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 oh, it was just under the pile of books. You moved the pile and there it was. Okay, I'm going to put my oil oh, around it, wrap it up, put it in my sack. Okay, and do so. Yeah. Uh, I'll look around one more time to see if there's anything else though. Uh, 21. 21. Uh, you search around, scuffling some more books here and there, uh, having a glance into the back, and you see what seems to be like a faint uh, shine. Coming in line with the doorway again, just further in. I didn't need this hand after all. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll make my way over there. I'm curious. All right, you kind of stumble over the books. Some of them slide under your feet uh, all over the place, and there's forms and pages. And, uh, you reach the item, and as you move some of the books across, it just reveals uh, a sword. A sword? Anything peculiar about it, or no? It looks like a typical steel sword. It just seems to be jammed in the books below and kind of caught in there. I will unsheath it. No, take it. All right, uh, you pull the sword out, and as you do, you begin to hear this powerful screeching scream coming throughout the there we go. Uh, the room, um, and it's just ear piercing you. It's almost stunning and putting you down. Can I? I stab it. And you stab it back in, screeching stops. Okay, so it needs to be sheathed or a little screen. Uh, 
immediately begin to hear footsteps going across to the door of the shop. And then, is everything all right in there? Um, you begin to hear the sounds of a guard answer. I uh, I leave the sword, and I'm gonna make my way back to the window quickly. All right, as you do, um, I'll have you roll stealth because you're gonna pass by the big panel window. Get the stairs. <laughs> Nope, using luck again. I, I only have one luck left, but... <laughs> I'm using luck again! I don't want to fucking get caught! There we go, not 20. Okay. I'm out of luck, though. That was okay. <laughs> Use that up really quick. Yeah. So... <laughs> a 2 and a 3 and a 3 roll. Yeah, you, you, you... As you go back into the front room with the counter and door and the window, you hug the wall and very quietly step across the door as you hear the more banging and the door shaking right beside you. Uh, if you don't respond, we're coming in. And as you go across the window, you keep low so that the shadow coats you. And you go up the wall of the stairs, only slight creaks are made. And you reach the window and you effectively can get out and get out again. Cool. I'll we'll make my way back to the tap room. Alright, and as you leave the window, you hear the door barge open and slam to the wall as you drop down. You make your way back to the tavern. Just roll casually. I walk back in, I look at Borkark, and I say, Don't worry, everything will be returned. And I, I slam the hand down, and I say, I want my ring. <sighs> grabs the item. Torn grabs the item, puts it in front of him. I guarantee you that costs more than any book in that stupid store. He reaches into his pouch and pulls out a little monocle and puts it over his left eye. Really expensive. Well, <laughs> well. All right, I say fine. That's fair game. That's probably the most expensive thing I've ever seen in a bookshop. Okay. Um, he slides the ring off. You earned it. He tosses it over to you. I put it in my sack. As you, as it grasps into your hand, and you go to put your sack. You can hear the sound of like a stampeding uh, horde of rams racing through the air. After you let it go, it dissipates. I will investigate that later. But uh, I say, thanks for the fun. This place is usually pretty boring. Uh, and I go to take the hand back. Because he did say I could return it. So. Anyways, you put some thoughts. Well, that was just fun. That was wonderful. All right. Well, time to kind of looks out through the window of the sun. Oh. Well, I have a job to get to, so I'm sorry I have to cut this short. It was awesome. Just wonderful meeting all of you. Something tells me I hope to see you again sometime. Something tells me we're gonna meet you again. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Maybe we'll chat after our speeches later on today. Oh, that would be splendid. That would be splendid. And he hops off the uh, chair and bows to you guys. He leaves the tavern. Away. I'll put the hand in my bag. I'm sure we're gonna visit our changing friend. I'll return it when we go. So, with that, um, as soon as Torn leaves, the door blasts open again, and this time you agree to a Warforged man who wears very royal clothing and a cape. Great. Uh, Another one. <laughs> the first one wasn't annoying enough. Uh, and you notice that he walks up, he, he stands stairs. with his hands behind his back, and the, and the red velvet keep he has drapes to the ground behind him. And he walks very upright and loyal to you guys, and bows at your presence. Um, are all of you ready? And as you hear him talk, you physically see that, that he has like human vocal cords mangled in his throat. Uh, you know this guy is, he's Quinn. To be specific, Quinn Cloudfang. He works for the king. He's his right hand man. And he has been tasked with basically being the manager of the future. Okay. appear at your settings when you be. How many times I have to tell you I'm not making some stupid speech? You're required to so just show up. Well, you did make the deal with the king. He is paying you a salary, after all. I'm sorry, I mean, I don't want to make your jobs difficult, but it'll, it'll be quick, I promise. It'll be all good. It'll, it'll be fine, I think. The people are gathering at the town square now, actually. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I was very glad to hear that. Uh, but I do have some tasks to do, so I will gesture that you best be on your way within the next couple of minutes. And uh, I will see you there. Yeah, we will see you there. And he gives you guys Thank a bow and turns around and leaves. Uh, through the windows, you begin to see the mass people make their way towards the square. 
Well, it looks like we should get on our way. Do we have to go? We made a deal with the king, so I think it's a good idea for us to go. Just don't expect any grandeur speech from me. I plan on saying don't no worry. Questions. And then I'm leaving. I can I can handle it. It's fine. Let us proceed. All right, so you guys exit from the tavern and merge into the massive crowds of people. You're still wearing your cloak. I'm I pull the hood down now. I pull the hood down. I mean, uh, they know me. I just wanted to make sure they didn't recognize me when I was um, robbing a place. Uh, yeah, as you pull down your hood and you know, just walking through, you know, various all the people you're passing by. The <gasps> children are like, "That's them!" You know, they're pointing fingers and they're chattering to themselves. Some of them are like trying to inadvertently touch you. I push real. any hands away. <laughs> push them away. Um, or not could just be like shaking hands, maybe do like some magic trick for the kids or something as he walks past. Oh, performance? Gandalf fireworks. <laughs> That's unfortunate. It, it was landed on 16, then rolled down their page. <laughs> But no, that's, that's still <laughs> a like 14. 14? Yeah. How like sad. That. He's like, 16. <laughs> it just rolled away. Uh, yeah, you put on quite a decent show. It's nothing super spectacular, yeah. but the kids are called by the You're shooting little sparks up into the air and making them like illusion balloon animals. And yeah. They touch it and it disappears. But they're like, wow. Um, the people are just appalled by it. They're loving it. Okay. As you make your way there. I, uh, I love games. Uh, so, I'm going to cast Major Image. I'm going to make an image to go along with your little show. Okay. Cool. What, you, you made, what, were, what did you make again? I was just like making like some small fireworks and like balloon animals and stuff like that. Yeah, and just yeah, like illusions of yeah. creatures. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn to you and I say, uh, pick an animal. Because <laughs> I can make an image of an object creature or some other visible phenomenon that's no larger than a 20 foot cube. Okay, uh, I'll lean down to one of the kids and be like, what's your favorite animal? The kid kind of like puts his hand over his nose. <laughs> uh, uh, bear. Uh, Any certain kind of bear? <laughs> Big bear, okay. Uh, and then I'll say to you, a really like a friendly like looking bear, but big. Friendly big bear. Yeah, some no bears are friendly. I know, but try to, but, uh, a bear that's not like scary or anything like that. Okay, I snap my fingers and half right. the world disappears. <laughs> no, uh, the, the sparks on the ground just start to like swirl, and, and then like a, a bear just slowly like emerges out of the ground. Like it, it, so I can make it. The image appears uh, a spot you can see within range, lasts for the duration, so it will last for up to ten minutes. You can't create a, uh, sorry, uh, it seems completely real, including sound, smells, and temperature appropriate to the thing depicted. Uh, yeah, and as soon as I'm within range, I can do, I can do whatever I want. So what kind of bear do you... I summon a large spirit bear. A bright white bear. That isn't a polar bear, so it's not quite as big, but, uh, yeah. And, uh, I put an arm on him, and I lean up against him, and I turn to the kid, and I'm like, he doesn't bite. Unless I say so. <laughs> <laughs> and the kid's just all wide-eyed, like, shaking in his spot. And everyone in the surrounding area stops for a brief moment to, like, look at this awesome bear that's there. And none of them seem scared by it. Good, because that was a third cool. level spell. <laughs> just standing there and, like, swaying his head back and forth. And swaying, doing normal bear movements. And it's working. People are awesome. And then slowly people are still making it really swear. Yeah. I look at board organizing. This one. Good job. That, that is great. As the crowd moves, uh, the new people that first see the bear always stop checking it out and everything. Follow us around for concentration, so up to 10 minutes. So he's with us for a little bit. All right. Um, Arden. Or wait, no, not Arden. Uh, AB. What do you think of the bear? Anything created by humans has a terrible stink to it. Come on, you guys. Last I checked, you were created by a human. Is that why you smell like shit? <laughs> guys, 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 <laughs> we've, we've got Humans a... can't create perfection. <laughs> <laughs> guys, we've, we've You're got a perfect an... trash canister. <laughs> we've got an image to keep up, guys. Some Just... some people are like, that are by you are like turning and giving us a frowning look. Yeah. <laughs> at, the, at, at least keep it out of here until... Until we get somewhere private, and then fine, you guys can argue and whatnot. I'm not. sick of his stares. Let's just keep these people happy, and we don't have much time. 
All right, you guys continue on your path to the square. Uh, upon almost reaching the square, you're about uh, 30 feet away from reaching it. Uh, in the alleyway, you happen to all notice that there seem to be two guards um, dealing with a man that is pressed up against a wall currently. He's quite surrounded by in the alleyway. I'll just go up to the guards and ask them, what's up? Like, what's happening here? Oh, he's... Nothing to be concerned about. It's just an unlawful citizen who committed a murder. Oh, we're really investigating him. Yes. You heard the guards. He's on our way. Uh, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah just make sure uh, you get all the evidence. Of course, of that course. Okay. You don't have need to trouble yourself with this. You are of one of the many bright heroes of our future. So you let us take care of the dirty work. You can go about your business. Of course. Th- thanks for I'd uh, much rather helping out with this town. Of course, we look forward to the speech. I'd much rather be elbow deep in dirty work than some stupid speech. <laughs> uh, but I keep falling. I keep going towards the speech there. Yeah. I'm disappointed though. I really wanted to check out that murder scene. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys leave the alleyway. Yeah, is that what you do? Yeah. All right, and you both leave the alleyway. You hear a, a slight scream, and you hear it's almost like a blade entering the stomach. Uh, are you yeah. able to see where it like came, where it was or what happened? Yeah, it came from the alleyway. Um, I stop. I look at them. I'm like, what kind of heroes are we if we don't check that out? I agree. Let's, let's Speech go. be damned. Uh, as you guys turn back around, and I'll like just tell someone nearby. Uh, say, uh, to spread word that we'll be there in a minute. Oh, I can do that, of course. And he begins running through the crowd and chanting it out loud uh, to everyone. They will only be a minute longer. <laughs> The guards can handle it. We are not needed. People are crazy. Uh, so you go back to the alleyway, <laughs> yeah. all of you? What do you mean? We just heard someone get stabbed and you only want to help? The guards are there. They have it under control. That is what they told us. It and immediately like afterwards, control. someone got stabbed. We're going. Uh, I mean, if you want, you can just uh, try to waste time before like, yeah, us two get back to stage. Your turn to play party tricks. I want to do distractions, I guess. And I'll step into the alleyway. All right. Uh, so everyone step in the alleyway. I'll proceed to the stage and I'll entertain the, the crowd. All right. So as you make your way, robot. Robot. Uh, so I'll say, yeah, as you travel there, we'll cover you two as well. First year, uh, Bork and Arden. So you get back into that way, and immediately you see that there's a guard, uh, but there's only one of them now, the other one's gone, and the uh, other person that was pressed up against the wall is gone as well. And you know, so the guard seems to be, like, looking at something, although you only see it back. Uh, what just happened, sir? Uh, oh, uh, I, t- I told you not to worry about this. Look, it's under control. Doesn't sound like it to me. Now don't we, lie to me. We just want to help out. We heard a scream and thought we should help. Oh yeah, he tried to resist arrest, so we just had to be Stabbed him? Forcible. <laughs> no, there was no stabbing. We just arrested him and sent him to the, the trial. So what's the scream? Do you know? No, I heard no scream. I'm gonna insight him, if that's okay. If I insight the street? Yeah. I rolled a 10. Uh, 18. Um, you don't really, you can't really get a good grasp on what he's going on about, but however you work, you can visibly see like sweat coming down his hairline, and uh, he's kind of flimsying his hand a little bit with the book he's holding in the other one. Okay. He seems a little orange. I'll say, listen, uh, we're supposed to be giving a speech, but... I think it's more important to make sure that everything is going well and the tower is safe. And we heard some screams, so we're here to investigate. So, please tell us what happened. I told you what happened. We arrested the man. You lied to us. We did not lie. Why would we, why would we <clears throat> lie to you? Because you don't want me to kill you. So, where did your fellow, where did your fellow <laughs> guard go with the, uh, prisoner? Uh, obviously to the, the, the dungeon, the prison cell. We'll have lock him up and await trial. Uh, Arden, do you want to uh, talk to this guy more, and then I'll see what's happening there? I would love to chat with him. I'm gonna give him uh, a key well, you know, I, I just could go send word and bring him here. Or you could stay right there. 
<laughs> the guard kind of just lowers the book and shuts it. Or I can just stay right here, but uh, I really think I could just go grab him. No. You'll stay right there. No intimidation. Can I do a quick perception on this book, too? Yeah. I rolled a 22 intimidation. Uh, 14. 14. Uh, yeah, as you close the book, uh, you got a couple of scripture that was talking about. Uh, it, it was like a list of names, and this was like the last one that wasn't crossed off. Okay. Yeah. And effectively, so here's a 22. 22. Um, or I can say, yeah, no problem. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Chat. Very well. You should have a chat. You can kind of hear his voice trembling. Okay, Bork, you go check out the other guy. Yeah, and Bork goes to ch- ch- uh, check um, the cells or whatever. He should be. He went left down the alleyway. So. That's where you, that's Thank you, sir. Thank you. I don't think he's being honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a very yeah, suspicious person. Yeah. yeah, if you... I'm very suspicious of him. I rolled a one, so... Oh, so did I! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You both completely and utterly believe that he went down the left part of the alley. Damn yeah. it. <laughs> being suspicious is not working out so far. I keep falling for stupid tricks. Now, quickly, we will flash back to... Um, I guess... Ages? Ages. Ages. So, uh, you arrive to the market square, and it is booming with people. I mean, they're shoulder-to-shoulder packed. There are guards all around behind them, around the perimeter of the square. And then there's a stage in the center that is hoisted out 15-ish feet, and then there are guards posted around the framing of that. It almost looks like a hangman's noose, except there's no noose on there. Um, and you notice that there's a nice path that is diverted with city guards that have made an entryway for you to go up to the stage. Okay. I'll just walk up to the stage, and I'll greet the crowd. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, as you go through uh, the pathway of the stage, or the pathway that the guards have made, people are very or quickly like reaching their hands out trying to grab you. And they're screaming your name and chanting, and very excited. The crowd is beginning to uproar. And sound, and uh, as you reach the stage, you get to the top, and you were just there, alone on the stage currently, <laughs> with all these. It's probably close to like eight hundred people surrounding you. Well, being very loud. Wolfgang told me to entertain the uh, the guests, so that is what I'm going to try and do. Okay, how would you like to entertain them? Um, when we we'll start talking about my past and retelling. War stories. Okay. Because that is literally all I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. There are children in there. <laughs> when I was 145, I crushed a dwarf's head with my bare uh, hands. <laughs> yeah. Okay, real performance. Never been the same since I killed that kid. <laughs> so, I got an eight. Um, as you begin to tell your stories, the second you speak a word that the guards will you hear, all the guards in the area slam down their large spheres and the crowds go silent and they begin to listen to you talk. And the story that you begin telling is very not uh, uplifting <laughs> or friendly. It's very brutal and Darkly it's brutal. kind of the kids, for example, parents are covering kids' ears. Uh, You're telling kids who aren't old enough to see uh, the Dark Knight, the <laughs> Dark Knight. <laughs> and uh, various citizens are looking very worried and shocked. Do you want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> yeah, it's working. They're intrigued. Yeah, they're listening to you, but they're, they're, it's not exactly the greatest stories of a lifetime. Uh, and as you're doing that, we will flip back to both of you, uh, Bork and Arden. You went off checking the other guy, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we'll have you questioning. Well, as soon as you go around the corner, I grab the man by the throat and I slam him up against the wall. And I say, you're going to tell me what the fuck just happened or I'm going to kill you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can I breathe? I'm not as nice as Bork Nork. And no, you can't breathe <laughs> until you promise to be a truthful little soldier. Alright, I promise. I promise. I, I let go. I but I make sure I'm between. he's between the wall and me. Like, he's not going anywhere. So. Okay. Uh, uh, Alright, well. Ask away, I guess. What'd you do? <laughs> and don't lie to me, I said. Well... Yeah, we stabbed him. Why? Then my colleague is taking his body away to hide. He's, uh, he knew some information that we didn't really want released. What information? 
confidential stuff. Like, it's not my pay grade to say. It's my pay grade to hear. Look, I don't know the information. <laughs> you don't, I was just told you don't to even find know. this man and stab him. I can get, get rid of it. What kind of city is this? It's a city you all shape it to be. Keeping their morals up. Who told you to stab him? I should not say this. You're really going to want to tell me. I can't look to you. It's not right. It's Quinn. Quinn gave me your cloud of fang. I've already slowly begun to really dislike War of War. But, uh, why would he want you? No, you already said you don't know shit. <sighs> Grabs his head. Did he really go left? No, he went right. That's what I fucking thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me the Probably book. getting close to the river now. Give me the book. Or your hand. One of the two. <laughs> he takes up the book <laughs> yeah. and carefully gives it to you. I take the book. Snap get him with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, snap. Ah! Now get out of here. Before I change my mind, and I put the book in my pocket, and I head off to turn right. Of course, sir. Kind of slowly and hunched over, and yeah. pulling his head, walks over. Yeah, I, I'm booking it. I don't, I don't even tell you, because I know that... Yeah. Yes. All right, and uh, we'll go to you now. Uh, Bork. <laughs> so you begin racing the left direction, and you keep yeah. going and going and going, and eventually you come to another busy street, although the people are not here anymore. But it's where most people traffic through, and it's just empty. It's desolate. Okay. Uh, do I see anything odd about the street besides that it's just desolate? Like, there's absolutely no one here? There's no one here. It's just okay. uh, there's barrels and crates on the sides of the road, and then there's houses strewn up the sides of the road as well, with locked doors and such, but nothing that seems to be looking at. Okay. Just an empty street. Okay. And I was told to go to the jail, right? Yeah, you were told to go to the jail. Is this, like, in this direction? It is, yeah. Okay. We're heading in the direction. Yeah, I'll, I'll just keep on heading there really quickly so I don't, so we don't, we're not too late to the speech. Alright, yeah, you race at full speed to the prison. It takes you about five-ish minutes to get there. And you see two human guards that are posted. Except these ones are wearing fully plated on, like, face covers and everything. And they are, uh, black. Okay. The steel is blackened. And they stand there with, uh, swords on their, Hips and then shields on their sides, but tucked in. Hey, I'll just ask them if they saw a guard uh, escorting a human. Or, wait, did I see what uh, race? He was a human, yeah. He was okay. a human guard. He was escorting uh, another human man. Okay, yeah, I'll just ask them if they saw a uh, human escorting a human. Um, no, I can't say we have. Thanks, that's I all I need to know. I kind of suspected that. Uh, okay. yeah, sorry to, uh, interrupt your work. I'll just be on my way. No, no, that's fine. Good luck on the speech. Thanks. And I'll just race back. Alright, you begin racing back to the yep. front. In about, uh, eight minutes, you reach the destination again, only to find that no one's there anymore. Okay. Like, the... Oh, you're going to the speech. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. The I just yeah. 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 going back to the... Yeah. Like, oh. Oh, I got lucky. He was still, he was not the speech. <laughs> so, yeah, you race over to the speech and you're agreeing to the crowds of people and... <laughs> Several children are crying. Uh, do, I see, <laughs> yeah. do I see the one guard anywhere? Like that he was talking to? Oh, perception. These kids are crying because of this horrifying war story they're hearing. But yeah, otherwise... Uh, 15. 15. Okay. So, yeah, as you approach the scene, the whole... Gathering of people are just silent, and you can faintly hear, um, Aegis, Aegis, or Aegis? Aegis is fine. You hear Aegis telling war stories, <laughs> horrifying, brutal war stories to the mass of people, and you see kids' ears are covered, and people are, like, looking in terror. So you hear in the crowd? Most of the people seem to be intrigued, like, yeah. oh, this poor man. Just a, uh, you did what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then... As you kind of look to the left around the bend of the people where the guards are kind of positioned around the perimeter, you see uh, a man that seems to be carrying something heavy on his shoulder and just ran into an alleyway. Yeah, I'm going to run out there. That temple. seems really suspicious to me. All right, so... Yeah, well, first of all, try to get Aegis' <laughs> yeah, attention somehow, like, wave my hand, and I'll just be like, one more minute. Okay. Oh, you're right there. Go perception with advantage. 
Let's see, 24 or 10. Good 10. Make him interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, easy enough. You see his hand waving and signaling okay. that you just need to stall a little longer. Also, since I can I kind of uh, do an inside roll to see what the crowd's feeling like? <laughs> yeah. That's a 7. They're a little, they're a little disgusting. <laughs> you think they are okay. enthralled, bro. <laughs> so, but uh, you figure that they are very intrigued by That's awesome. Person. I also dislike failing anything, so I'm going to try and change up my story into more uh, lighthearted tales. Okay, what do you wish to speak about for the crowd? Uh, what will be your topic? The masses. Dwarven history. Okay. Uh, you now change your topic. Uh, you just stop abruptly. <laughs> you stop being talking about dwarven history. How robotic. <laughs> and then my fist came down. Did you guys hear things? <laughs> yeah, it's like your fist, and then my fist came down. And now a dwarf's history, chapter one. So, <laughs> the history of dwarves, chapter one. <laughs> More specifically, I'll talk about the, uh, the ruins that I was... Uh, okay. Caved in. So, yeah, you begin to talk about your... Time spent in the, the ruins of the dwarf area, um, how you've had your chances to train and better yourself, um, keeping it safe while it's happening. Uh, you begin to run to the suspicious man that just walked in the alleyway, but about halfway you begin to get stopped as the crowd begins to notice you, and they start surrounding you. I and they're like, oh my god, it's you, it's you, and they're preventing you from going any further. Uh, I'll say... Just one moment, and then I'll use Dimension Door to go to... <laughs> <laughs> to go okay. to right, like, right in front of the guard. Okay. Beautiful. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, the people are crowding you, and they're like, oh my god, as they're about to reach you, you're like, one minute, and you just zap out of existence, and immediately you pop back in, but you don't go in front of the guard because you don't know where he is in that alleyway. Oh, okay. But you're about five feet behind him. Okay, cool. And he's currently still um, walking. He doesn't know yeah. Uh, I'll just yell out, stop! Stop! Hey, you! And uh, the guard looks back here. Oh, shit. And he begins <laughs> running with the body on his shoulder. Okay. Uh, is that the one from the alley? Oh, yeah. And he caught it. In his eye. Uh, I will use... I'll let you have whole person job. I'll use suggestion on him. Suggestion? Yeah. Okay. Or I think suggestion, I just have to double check. What, what I think you say one word. At this point, um, Arden, you ran through the alley pathway, but you kept going through all the alleys, and the next, about the third one alley that you cross, comes, you look to your right, and you see that man who's running towards you and away from uh, Bork. Okay. Uh... I'm gonna use a cantrip then. I'm gonna use mold earth. Okay. Um, we'll let you do this. First. Yeah, I'm using suggestion and saying pretty much just telling them to stop and wait for me. Okay, and what does he have to pass? Uh, 17 wisdom saving throw. Ooh, yeah, never mind. You got 16. And as you halt him, this, you tell him to stop, he then stops in his tracks and Stands there and kind of puts the body down, uh, lays it on the ground. <sighs> uh, what do you got there, son? Oh, um, this is my brother. Let's see, open up the bag. Sure. Uh, I walk up and I punch him in the face. <laughs> I'm like, tired of you little shits lying to me. <laughs> oh, Arden, Arden, Arden. So- oh. As the guard goes to reach down to open up the bag before he goes to grab it, he gets punched in the side of the head and falls on the ground. No lethal like, oh. damage, no lethal damage. <laughs> like, oh, oh, what the hell was that for? I grab him by his shirt and I'm like, we're murdering someone. <laughs> what are you talking about? I murdered nobody. And Bork Bork will look in the bag. Uh, you open up the bag and you find that it's a bunch of potatoes. But as you move some of the potatoes, there's a dead body. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I, was like, no way. I was like, for real? It's like his dirty laundry. <laughs> and I, yeah, I'm holding him, and I look at Borknar, and I'm like, it's the body? Yeah. I look back, and I'm like, didn't murder anybody? Personally, no, I didn't murder anybody. My colleague did. You probably want him. 
Sassy. You're just hiding the evidence, getting rid of the evidence. Just a good person. I was actually taking it to the gods, the barracks, to show them what happened. I'm sure you were. I was. That explains you running away from me. I was trying to get there quickly. Right after I showed up. I, I raised my fist and I said, didn't I say I'm tired of your fucking lies? <laughs> I was spooked, how can I say? Um, I think we've got a... What are you person. going to do? I think we might as well have taken to jail. You're lucky I'm not going to kill you. No, no, there's no need for that. I don't need to go... I wasn't, I wasn't doing anything wrong. Uh, yes, you were. I take out my oil rag and I shove it in his mouth. I'm tired of listening to these players. Arden, Arden, Arden. He's what? We're taking him to jail. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. He's just going to keep bullshitting him the whole way there. You're right, you're him right. Up. You're right. We'll quickly flash back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Just, and that was how dwarven women were made. <laughs> <laughs> and afterwards, yeah, you just finished discussing how the position of the sun um, makes the mountains glow. Look, my two red eyes. Uh, the crowd <laughs> can tell very much the difference of the crowd now from switching your topic. Uh, the kids ears have been uncovered, and everyone's paying attention, and they look amazed by the story. Uh, in which place you begin to see Quinn running down the path to the stage. Okay. Uh, which he approaches, he goes up the stairs, and he says, oh, Sorry about that. One of my ears took a little longer than it did uh, previously. I'm a little winded. And he puts his hand behind his back. So I see you've been keeping them company. As much as I can. Oh, wonderful. Um, I shall take it from here then. Um, everyone! I mean, gestures to the crowd. We're probably going to die. And that's where we'll pause for now. 